Today's video is brought to you by the letter P. P is for Pringles. P is for Pop-Tarts. P is for Payday. Letter P. Here's an interesting plant that's growing around the campsite here. I've seen it in a couple different places. And I also saw it last year right around this time when I camped over at Reed Lake on the east side of the state. This is called Indian Pipe, or it's also known as a Ghost Flower. It's not a fungus, though it looks like it might be a mushroom. It's not a fungus, it's a plant that totally lacks chlorophyll. And usually it only appears uh, very briefly in the period right after a heavy rain, which uh, we had here over the weekend, Friday and Saturday, a couple waves of thunder storms rolled through here and uh, really soaked everything good. So we have Indian pipe blooming all around. Well, good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to this week's episode of Hiking with Creepy Old Guys. Yeah, you can see from the sign, there it is. I'm in the High, Bank, High Banks Lake Campground of the Manistee National Forest, just south of Baldwin, Michigan, and we're going to go for a day hike on the North Country Trail today. So get your hiking poles, your backpack, and your hiking boots. You know all the stuff you need. Let's go. That away. Got a beautiful morning here. It's absolutely gorgeous. I drove up yesterday and spent the afternoon and evening in High Banks Campground. It was a beautiful, beautiful day, beautiful evening. Beautiful night. I slept in my tent last night without the rain fly. Looked at the stars and the moon overhead. Got down to about 50 degrees. Uh, Listen to the coyotes in the distance, the owls. Just beautiful. And today is starting out sunny and bright and cool. I expect uh, temperatures in the 70s probably. Low 80s. Perfect day for hiking. Oh, and I should mention, there were no insects to speak of last night and so far this morning either. So, knock on wood. Well, I'm only <laughs> five minutes into the hike, and I'm, it's going to be a long hike if I, if I start doing this. But I had to stop and show you this uh, little beauty spot along the trail. This is an old uh, pothole, glacial pothole here that's filled in. Uh, just looked beautiful the way the sun was hitting, hitting those uh, aquatic plants out there. They're glowing golden in the morning sun. In the foreground there we have a bunch of ferns growing in the shade. Further out, I don't know what that plant is, but ah, the glory of the woods and nature. Well, this is looking back the way I came, and I don't know if you can tell, but the, the trail takes a split here. Uh, and they've conveniently laid a log across the uh, incorrect leg of the fork and the correct way is well blazed. So if you were headed off the North Country Trail into High Banks Campground, you'd come to this fork and you'd know to go to the left. I imagine this trail just kind of follows the shore of the lake 
because it's right down there. And you can see how steep the sides are here. It's, it's obvious how it got its name, High Bank Lake. All right, I see a tree up there with the uh, offset blazes on it, offset to the right. So pretty sure this is our the end of our spur and the beginning of the North Country Trail, but we'll see in a second. Turn right. Yeah, here we have the uh, regulation porcupine nod sign in the forest. Anyway, we just came from High Banks, White Blazes, and we're headed south to Cleveland Drive, which is uh, Nichols Lake, 4.33 miles. This way. North Country Trail. There's a song called North Country Girl. I don't know who it's by. Maybe somebody can uh, work with the lyrics and make it into North Country Trail. All right, this way. And there's our first blue blaze. A trail obstruction ahead. Uh, I was going to say it looks fresh, but it's not. It's, it's been down a while. They've been in sowing. And it looks like we can pick our way through this. We swiped all the spider webs out of there for the day. They'll have to get busy and make new ones. Noticing a more or less parallel trail here along about the first quarter of a mile. more distinct back that way. It looks like it might be the remnants of an old two track anyway. North Country Trail is over here. No blazes on this one. nice forest here mostly oak some maple and some white pine here and there you see a red pine but it's mostly oak maple looks like it might be uh, second or third growth I'm pretty sure all this land would have been uh, lumbered off back in the uh, late 18th and early, or late 19th and early 20th century. Uh, I don't know if it's been uh, replanted and reharvested since then. And I don't see many stumps back in here, but these oak trees 
don't look to be that old. 50 years maybe. Well, we're coming to uh, Forest Road here, two track through the woods. Some tracks on it. Looks like it's seen some recent usage. But our trail continues that way. Actually a nice little spot right here to do some uh, dispersed camping. Just a little just a little turnout from the forest road. Someday I'm gonna do that. Right back to the trail. The Huron Manistee Forest has miles and miles of uh, two-track forest roads. I stopped on the way up at the uh, Baldwin Ranger District Ranger office and picked up uh, motor vehicle use maps for this region. And uh, there are uh, tight restrictions on uh, which roads what vehicles can travel which roads but uh, you'd better have that map with you if you decide to come up here and go exploring these roads because if you get caught on a road that you're not allowed to be on uh, it's bad news heavy fines I don't know if they can take your vehicle but uh, heavy fines so motor vehicle use maps they issue new ones every year the National Forest Service they're free. You can uh, write for them and, and uh, receive them by mail. Probably you can order them online and you can pick them up from the district ranger offices. Let's take a little walk down in here. I just saw something. Yep, it's exactly what I thought it was. So here we are out in the middle of nowhere. Got this little pothole wetland here alongside the trail out in the middle of nowhere. And here's an old snow tire and wheel that somebody's decided to get rid of. They drove all this way back in the woods to get rid of their snow tire. These little humps, seeing them all along the trail. Moss. I'm calling them pincushion moss because they look for all the world like a pincushion. Probably not their name, but I'm no botanist. I'm crossing another two track here. This one is uh, much less defined. Right into the sun, I'm sorry. No vehicle tracks at all. Actually, I see the other trail up there. It looks like it branches off from that one, the other forest road. I don't know if you can see it. In the distance there, I'm zoomed all the way out in the distance there. Someone's camper and I see a blue tarp. Somebody's back here dispersed camping. Yeah, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna walk down there and disturb those folks. But there's an actual uh, Forest Service sign there alongside the two track. It says camping is allowed sites only. So there must be some actual uh, designated sites down there. And what a cool place to come and camp and have the whole forest to yourself. Traveling light today. Just got my day pack. Probably around, uh, boy. Why do I always decide to film when the sun's right behind me? <laughs> ah, I just got my day pack today. 
the original plan was to drive up and leave the vehicle at uh, Nichols Lake North Trailhead, hike with a full pack load to High Banks, spend the night and hike back. But I got to thinking about it. Man, last hike I did, I got so sore from carrying that big old pack. Why don't I just drive to High Banks, get a site, relax, spend the evening, afternoon and night there, and get up the next day and do an out and back with just a day pack. So that's what I'm doing. And I can already say it was a wise decision. My pack right now is probably right around 12 pounds. See the moon up there? Half moon, pretty much. That dude was shining in my tent last night like a headlight. It's another nice little lake down there. Yeah, I just checked my uh, map. That's called Condon. Not Condom, you dirty-minded people. Condon Lake. There's a better view of it. Mirror still right now. So this is a hike that I uh, I learned about from uh, Jim Dufresne's book, Michigan uh, Best Michigan Hiking and Backpacking. I don't know if that's the exact title, but most of you are probably familiar with that book. I've been wanting to branch out and explore more of the state and uh, the North Country Trail. I see a lot of videos on YouTube, people doing the North Country Trail, section hikes, day hikes, out and backs. Not too many opportunities for loops, as I understand, as I'm still learning. This is... Uh, one of the hikes that Jim Dufresne uh, highlights in that book of his. I come to this little spot right here. Perfect dispersed camp spot. Remains of a campfire there. Back there. Man, it goes back a ways. Yeah, um... This is one of the areas that Jim Dufresne recommended as a excellent, perfect for dispersed camping because it's flat and open. And he's definitely right. The lake is right down there. And in fact, we'll go back and uh, cross the NCT here. can see the lake down there and there's actually uh, pretty much of a path worn in the slope here. Thank God it's not eroding. It's nice and soft covered with pine duff. I think that's kind of protecting it a little bit. We'll walk down here and look at the lake. Oh, this is very pretty. And actually on the far shore there, that is most definitely a dispersed site there. Perhaps that's private property. I see a boat over moored on that shore. And uh, I don't know. I see uh, sun glinting off something up the bank, uh, an automobile or something in the woods there. I don't know if they're private cabins in there or someone's just dispersed camp and brought their rowboat with them. Oh, this is a gorgeous little spot. Here's the embankment I just came down. Yeah, I don't know. We're maybe... 30, 40 feet below trail level right here. Now you all know that uh, you're not supposed to hike or not supposed to camp within 200 feet of water. 
there's not really uh, any good spots to pitch a tent here, but you certainly could uh, sling a hang hammock between all these oak trees here. I'm sure you could find a pair. Wouldn't be a bad spot. I don't know, probably uh, 200 feet from the water would be right up there at uh, that second steep embankment right in there. Just stop for a minute here. I'm, my heart's still pounding because I climbed back up that embankment. But look at how pretty this forest floor is. You have the tall oaks overhead and just this beautiful glade of ferns underneath, sun dappled. What a magnificent place. A few hundred yards further on down the trail, here's another campsite. So if any of you are thinking of doing a section hike along here or an out and back, plenty of campsites available in the area of Condon Lake. Well, we come to a uh, sizable ravine here. Hold the camera still, Mark. I can see the trail over on the other side of it, so I imagine that we uh, go up this way to the head of the ravine and around the head rather than down and up the other side. Although, sure enough, folks have shortcutted it. It's got uh, a trail down the slope here and up the other side. I don't have to tell any of you how glorious it is to be in the woods in the morning, especially on a day like today. Ah, the lighting, oh, the lighting is so perfect here right now. The shafts of light, it's still kind of low. I imagine it's about 10 a.m. Pretty soon it'll be changing, but the low angle shafts of light through the forest, illuminating spots on the forest floor like that. Ah. Uh, what do you want to call it? Arrangement. <laughs> uh, an arrangement of ferns. Those three ferns back there. <laughs> Words fail me sometimes. Beautiful little vernal pond down here. Call it a hanging lake. Oh, there's some whitetails up ahead, too. They heard me talking, and they're long gone. Hi. Some other hikers there. I always turn the camera off because I don't know how people feel about being in my videos. So anyway, you can look at them as they go. <laughs> They're setting a good pace. I'll never catch up to them. Here's that little vernal pond. It's been so wet this year, so much rain. Uh, back at High Bank Lake, it was obvious how high the water was there much higher than the normal water level. One of the sites even was closed because part of it was underwater down by the lake. And I imagine most years at this time, late July, this pond is all but dried up. And you can see just beyond out there, it's another little uh, old pothole lake. And uh, yeah, this one is, uh, about 20 feet above that, this little pond puddle. The water's trapped here in a little swale. Gotta move. 
standing still, the uh, mosquitoes are finding me finally. So far there haven't been any bugs, but it's getting warmer and I'm working up a sweat too, so that'll bring them out every day. Now this is about the biggest tree I've seen so far. That one must be uh, four feet in diameter. Looks like a uh, maple, perhaps. Big old maple tree. Some of you may have caught at the beginning one of the clips at the beginning of this video where I announced uh, welcome to another edition of uh, hiking with creepy old guys. And you're probably wondering what the hell is that all about? Well, I'll explain. I belong to uh, several Facebook groups dedicated to hiking backpacking in Michigan and one of them I won't name it but yeah I won't name it I don't want to hurt anyone's tender feelings <laughs> but it seems to be populated mostly by the popular term is Millennials now there's nothing wrong with that I'm all for everybody getting out in the woods I'm glad they are, and I'm glad they're enjoying it, and I'm glad they're sharing it. Uh, sometimes their enthusiasm surpasses their knowledge, but that's to be forgiven. They've still got a long life to live ahead of them. All right, I digress. <laughs> anyway, one of the threads, one of the posts, one of the threads on there was about hiking, backpacking alone. And someone made the comment, who hikes alone anyway? Only creepy old men. And let me tell you, when I read that, that cut right to the heart. Right to the heart. So you millennials, you know who you are. 35 years, you're going to be my age, too. We'll see who's creepy then, because I'll probably be dead. <laughs> and all the creepiness will be left to you. I'm just poking fun at you. Don't, don't get butt hurt. Anyway, that, that couple that, that uh, passed me back there, they were about my age, mid-60s. But they weren't creepy because they're a couple. So that's all it takes. If I could get my wife to come out here in the, on these tracks with me, I would. I would just love to share it with her. But she's not interested. Bugs and sweat and uh, lack of proper toilet facilities is, is more than she can overcome. Here's another little uh, depression filling in. Probably at one time it was a lake, but a gradual process. Progression is uh, filling it in from the edges out. It's now filled with uh, grasses out in the middle. The shrub, shrubby growth is starting to encroach from the shore. Oh, my eyes. Yeah, you can see how high the sun's getting now. It's warming up. And there is actually, this this land is just crisscrossed with two tracks. There's actually a two track that comes down from the forest there to the shore of the lake. And it actually goes, you can see it going right along the lake here. Uh, don't know where that would lead. Be interesting to come back here and explore, but I doubt it's a forest road and I doubt that you'd be allowed to be on there with a motor vehicle. If you got caught, you'd be in uh, deep Dutch, as we used to say. Don't know what's going on right now. There's like three different airplanes flying overhead and destroying the uh, serenity of this moment.
I probably should have wore a lighter pair of pants today. I have on a pair of heavier cotton uh, cargo pants, for lack of a better term. Uh, and uh, they're already getting sweaty. And they're falling, sliding down around my hips. And uh, kind of chafing at my thighs. But the reason I wore them is because I treated them earlier this year with permethrin to ward off ticks. Basically my whole outfit today is permethrin treated socks, pants, shirt. Ah, the only thing that isn't my shoes because I bought them after I ran out of permethrin and my hat. Same deal there. The pants are great though. I love them. They're, uh, I bought them online about four or five years ago from an outfit uh, called LA Police Gear. <laughs> 1995 they were selling them for at the time. You absolutely can't beat the price point. Now, they're made in China, which is how you get that price point. But overall, I'd have to rate them as pretty good pants. The sewing is decent on them. I've popped a couple seams that I've had to re-sew. And uh, all the Velcro on the pockets is shot. Chinese Velcro sucks. It wears out after a couple washings. But overall, I really like these pants. And I definitely, I'd buy another pair. Just loads and loads of pockets on them. Uh, you can put so much stuff in them, they'll weigh you down. Actually, these, like I said, the company's called LA Police Gear, and these are what's known as tactical pants. So they're made for law enforcement guys, first responders, uh, <laughs> military wannabes. That's what my wife thinks I am. on the slope above this uh, wetland coming up on Leaf Lake. I just looked at the map. This wetland ties in to the north side of Leaf Lake. It is just full of bullfrogs. I'm not sure if my uh, lapel mic can pick that up or not and there was one down there just given uh, I don't know what they call that bellowing row 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 Two of them that time. Cool. I just looked at the map. I've probably got about a mile maybe to go. Maybe a mile and a half. I didn't actually look at the mile marker dots on the map. But uh, getting pretty close to Nichols Lake, which was the destination for the day the turnaround point. I'm going to find a shady spot somewhere around there. And I brought some ramen noodles. I'm going to have some lunch, warm some ramen noodles. Huh. I haven't even needed my snacks yet. I had such a big breakfast. Huh. Pop-tart and uh, a large serving of uh, packet gourmet. Uh, some kind of oatmeal breakfast, oatmeal quinoa, hemp hearts, dried fruits, nuts. Man, that stuff was thick. Pretty tasty, too. Was too lazy to bother filming back at camp. Uh, sometimes that just detracts from the experience. I'd rather 
be mindful of where I am and what I'm doing and my surroundings rather than focusing on uh, the videography, storytelling. Uh, I know I d I'm doing that right now, but that was my intention from the very beginning of this trip. So uh, on the return leg, I'm probably just gonna put the camera away unless something really outstanding presents itself like uh, Sasquatch waking up from his midday nap. But yeah, on the way back, I'll be mindful in the moment. Someone's uh, deer blind down there by the water. A little knoll overlooking the uh, swamp there. Looks like a nice place to camp, but legally it's too close to the water. So you couldn't, shouldn't. Push the red button, Mark, that makes it record. And wait till the sun's not at your back. How's that, awkward or not? So I really enjoy walking these northern Michigan trails for the solitude you get. Holy cow, phone's ringing, time out. <laughs> what was I saying about solitude? <laughs> Of all times and places, I haven't had, a, I haven't received a phone call in probably 10 days. <laughs> of all places. Anyway, it was a junk call. Uh, as I was saying, I really love uh, these northern Michigan trails, not only for their, the sheer beauty of the northern woods, but also for the solitude of the hiking. It's... You see so few people, especially like midweek when I'm out here. Weekends might be a different story. But today, just those two people passed me. I got the woods to myself. And no trail runners, no housewives with kids in tow, no uh, dog walkers. I don't even know if you can bring your dogs in, in the woods. I guess you can. I, I'm not a dog owner, so I'm not aware of that kind of stuff. But yeah, just you in the woods. You and the birds. Now, I know what I just said about solitude, and I got the trail to myself. I don't want that to sound like I'm a selfish person. To the contrary, I think everyone should be out enjoying nature, including dog walkers, trail runners, and housewives with toddlers in tow. But that's the urban environment. That's I can't always I can't always get up to the woods as often as I like, and so that's why I really enjoy this. Uh, when I'm back home, sure, I'm out there with all those people, and I'm not minding them. I'm not uh, resenting their presence. <sighs> Bug on the screen. I'm not resenting their presence, so don't take that the wrong way. And I don't know what that is. Those logs look like they've been deliberately laid across the trail here. I don't know if that's an attempt to keep bicyclists out of here. Some sections of the NCT are open to cycling, mountain bikers, but I've seen not a single mountain bike track all morning. But these look to be deliberately laid. I don't can't imagine a branch falling and uh, arranging itself like that. I don't know. Usually when you see that, it's like 
saying don't go this path it's the wrong fork but there's a blaze right there so I guess I'll just step through there's some more Indian pipe ghost flower that is such a strange plant time for a little point of view All walking and no talking. The sights and sounds of the Manistee Forest along the North Country Trail. A woodpecker back in there somewhere. He's in there. I'm watching him right now. I I can't zoom in with this camera. Woodpecker has a white rump and a red head. Is it a red belly? I think it might be. It's not a pelated woodpecker. He sure is making a racket. He says, I'm a woodpecker. This is my tree. I'm a woodpecker. Look at me. I'm not seeing any sassafras trees to speak of, but the forest floor is just covered with these little sassafras seedlings all along the trail. You should come in here in the springtime and gather these for their roots and brew some sassafras tea. Good for the circulation. Another little black water swamp here. I love these spots when you come across them in the forest. The black is like a mirror. Spotlight. Okay, trees, it's your moment in the sun. Your moment in the spotlight, do something. Not today, they're shy. The water is alive right now. If it's insects or tadpoles or what. See those golden areas, little shafts of sunlight hitting those spots. You can 
see all the tannins in the water. Using a new uh, app on my iPhone for mapping. I'll show it to you when I stop. Anyway, I checked. We're about uh, three quarters of a mile from the Nichols Lake North Trailhead where I'm going to have lunch. I know I'm close. There was a spur trail back there and I could hear voices and I believe it was the spur to the uh, walk up lake. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. Walk up or wall cup. Look at the pines back there. Red pines. Yeah, so it was a spur trail to that campground and that's right across the street from uh, Nichols Lake Trailhead. So, and I hear, I can hear like uh, somebody's got a boom box going. I hear, I hear vehicle traffic too. We're almost there. Them are some tall pines. They gotta go a long way to reach the sun. First time ever, I just startled a group of pelated woodpeckers. I'll never, I'll never catch them on the camera. Maybe I'm gonna walk slow here. Ah, there goes one. Three of them. They're too smart for me. They stay just ahead of me. When I get close, they go around to the other side of the tree or fly to the next tree. I've never seen one in the wild. This is freshly fallen. I would imagine in the storm the other night. To the limbo. And there's Cleveland Drive out there. So we're almost to the trailhead. Look both ways. It's a truck! It's a truck! P is for parking. Presume that's the way to the trailhead. So here's the trailhead lot. No one's in it. Trailhead right there. I believe this goes down to the lake to a boat launch. I'm hoping there's some place down there I can sit by the water and have lunch. Hope it's not too far. See a welcoming committee up ahead. Canada geese. They're not too welcoming. They're all headed back to the water. There they go. Anyway, got a sweet setup here. A couple of picnic tables in the shade. Ooh, I need lunch. 
the geese decided to come back. I'm no threat. Having some lunch, trimming the grass. Oh, we have achieved ramen boilage. Time to get it off the heat. So I told, I told you I had a, a mapping application that I'm using on my phone on this hike. It's called Avenza Maps. And I learned about it from the North Country Trail Association website. They, they uh, have maps available for download, but you need this Avenza reader to uh, actually access the map. Uh, the app is free. Uh, just sign up for their service and you can download to your phone and then you can go to the store and all the maps for the North Country Trail are free and then there's literally thousands of other maps that are available too so I downloaded the uh, Manistee National Forest maps one 125 through 143 and I also downloaded and this one cost me 99 cents but uh, US Geological Survey topographic map of this region and uh, their maps are downloaded to your phone so you don't have to have cell service to use them so that's really great and uh, We'll pick this map, Manistee National Forest. And I happen to know it's map number 137. And you see the blue dot there, it's located me at the Nichols North Trailhead. And the north. This is the North Country Trail map. The the uh, trails in the red dotted lines there. You have the red diamonds for every mile and half mile. Can rotate, zoom, pan. All all the normal things you can do. Anyway, it's been working fine and. Uh, not that I've really needed it. I used it a couple times just to verify where I was. Uh, not that I really needed it this morning. The trail was real easy to follow. Only one spot where I got confused and it was just me, not the, not the trail's fault. Uh, but yeah, it gives, a, it gives a level of confidence to you. Now I do have the paper maps and a compass too and a GPS with me. I haven't even turned on the Garmin GPS. Anyway, just thought I'd give you a, a quick shot there. I uh, finished my noodles. My belly is distended from eating so much, and it's time to get back on the trail. Yeah, like I said, uh, I'm going to concentrate on hiking for the return trip, and I think I'm just going to put the camera away in the backpack. Uh, that'll That'll prevent me from filming and running my mouth. I'll have some final last words back at the uh, campground when I get there. Uh, got a couple things to show you back there before, before I get on the road. Anyway, lunch was good. Now it's time to burn off those calories. See you back at the camp. Bye. Found a tree troll. Nose, mouth, he doesn't have any eyes. And up there, that looks like a chimpanzee or an orangutan in profile. Forest protectors. Oh, I felt the little hot spot starting to develop on the side of my heel here. So I stopped and uh, put some moleskin on it. See if that helps.
So I figured it out. Remember on the way on the way out this morning, it came to this spot on the trail with these logs deliberately laid across it and I was looking down instead of up. Here's a big oak that has fallen over, toppled over and is basically hanging over the trail with just this uh, six inch sapling supporting it and the sapling right there has a fracture in it too. So what this is supposed to mean, and I should have known better because it's deliberately laid, this means warning danger, look up. And there it is, there's the danger. I'm becoming trail wise. All right, I am back to my campsite. It's about 2.25 in the afternoon. I left the site at 8.25 this morning. Yeah, so six hours round trip to uh, Nichols Lake north and back. Probably about, uh, uh, what, three and a half going and two and a half coming or something like that. I don't know. Who's counting anyway, right? <laughs> I'm back and I'm in one piece. I didn't get lost. The bears didn't eat me. Tree didn't fall on me. What else could happen? I don't know. Trip and fall go boom. Mosquito bites. Nah, it was an awesome hike. There's that word, that overused word awesome, but it really does apply. It was just absolutely gorgeous out there this morning. Everything about it. The weather was perfect temperature, lack of insects, although on the uh, return leg uh, they were a little more active, but a uh, little bit of repellent took care of them. Anyway, I mentioned when I got back I had something to show you, so let me get the uh, thing turned around here and I will. So I made an effort on the campsite to uh, leave it cleaner than I found it. So any kind of trash I found laying around, I threw in my garbage bag. But this is kind of a, a weird little thing that I found. It's a little plastic like bomb or missile. It says number 20 on it. It's a hole in the front, a hole in the back. I have no idea what that is, but it looks kind of cool. So I'm going to take it home and, and hang it with my trophies of stuff that I've found on campsites. At just about every site I stay on, I find something interesting, and I have a whole pile of junk at home. But I'm going to show you right now. This is the ultimate find. Pie iron. Romes. Cast iron, genuine cast iron pie iron. Now I did not find this on my site. I actually went uh, up uh, the embankment behind my site and across the forest road last night looking for a place to hang my uh, food bag away from the animals. And I happened to, uh, there was a pullout in the road there. It looked like an old campsite. And I looked down and I saw something glistening in the leaves. So I reached down to pick it up. And uh, this, is, this is what I saw. This face was, the rust was kind of reflecting. I don't know if you can see that. Anyway, solid cast iron, pie iron. A little bit of elbow grease, re-season it. And I got an excellent, excellent pie iron. So I am going to put my uh, lightweight shorts on and I'm going to go take a dip in the lake down there, rinse off, cool off, and then I'm going to get in my truck and drive three hours back home. And uh, on the way up, coming through Nuego on M37, I saw Nuego Brewing Company in downtown Nuego. So I think a uh, stop there on the way home is in order. So anyway, 
Uh, thanks for coming along. Like always, I enjoyed making this video. Uh, really glad that I decided to uh, do the hike as a day hike rather than a uh, full pack out and back hike. It went a lot easier today. The 10 miles with only with less than 20 pounds on my back. That, that was a wise move and I think I'm going to endeavor to do that in the future. So anyway, again, thanks. I'll see you next time. And remember, it's never a bad day to be in the woods. And today was an especially good one. So get out there. Bye. My feet are in the water and the little fishies are really curious. I'm sitting on a bench that's out in the water and my feet are dangling in about a foot of water and the little sunfish keep nipping at my toes and my ankles. <laughs> it tickles. Ouch! Good thing they're not piranhas. Fishy kisses. They're cleaning the barnacles from my hull. <laughs>